Hello everyone and welcome to today's video on what is Hyper-V and virtualization. Do you know friends, long gone are the days when businesses relied on physical infrastructure and wasted money on office space, training and learning. Despite the fact that every business needs infrastructure, companies want to focus on running their operations rather than putting obstacles in their way. But what should be done in this case? What's the solution? You guessed it right, it's Hyper-V and virtualization technology. Now before we move on and learn more about what is Hyper-V and virtualization, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. So let's discuss our agenda first. So we are going to be starting with first, what is Hyper-V and virtualization. Moving ahead, we are going to learn about how to use Hyper-V and virtualization technology. Then we are going to learn about the virtualization benefits. Moving ahead, we are going to discuss the virtualization disadvantages. And at the end, we are going to discuss the conclusion. So let's start with what is Hyper-V and virtualization. Let me tell you something about cloud computing. Cloud computing is actually built on the virtualization technique, which actually makes it possible to use the actual computer hardware more effectively. And by this statement, you would have got some idea regarding virtualization. By the use of software, virtualization can divide the hardware components of a single computer such as its processors, memory, storage, and the other components into several virtual computers, also known as virtual machines. So this overall terms as virtualization. Let me tell you about something. Microsoft's virtualization software or hypervisor, which is also known as Microsoft Hyper-V, enables administrators to more efficiently utilize their hardware by virtualizing several operating systems to run concurrently on the same physical server. You can virtualize server operating systems in a data center, Windows phone environments on your desktop and most things in between with Microsoft Hyper-V. It is also a fantastic tool for software developers that need a secure testing environment. Virtualization was only starting to gain a popularity when Microsoft Hyper-V made its debut in 2008. Few people were aware of that, what it was, and even fewer recognized what they could use it for. Everything felt hazardous, difficult to implement, and theoretically complex. In a short period of time, a lot of things have changed. Virtualization is now widely used. Around it, data centers are constructed. On it, developers rely. Cloud service providers rely on it. So you can imagine its importance. Microsoft's product has been improving as interest has increased, widely used and quickly overtaking VMware ESXi. Undoubtedly, the industry leader in the enterprise of virtualization is Microsoft Hyper-V. Now let's move forward and understand how to use Hyper-V virtualization technology. If you are a brand new to this technology, it would be beneficial for you to spend a short while getting familiar with the fundamentals of virtualization before getting started with the Hyper-V. Just have a look on it. Now, if I tell the conceptual barriers that obstruct the proper deployment and operation can result from having not basic understanding of how Hyper-V works. We will start with a well-known computer beginning with the hardware. This is constructed of the motherboard, processor, RAM, hard drive and display. The initial layer of installed software is an operating system. Its main responsibility is to organize all of that hardware, making sure that each bit is sent to its intended location. Its roles include receiving inputs from gadgets like keyboard and mouse. Directing output to the screen, printers and other devices is a related task. Virtualization is taking place whether you realize it or not. Abstraction is more commonly referred to as virtualization. One of an operating system's core function is abstraction. You don't have time to spend learning how to instruct your printer to print a report by sending binary commands and data to the CPU. In order to send print jobs to the printer, the operating system displays an abstraction of that printer to you. The print job that you constructed was made inside another program that offered an abstraction of the document. The mouse cursor and icons are both abstraction. If I talk about the hypervisor, our hypervisor takes this abstraction up one more level. This is reflected in the origin of the word. In the earlier times, 
what we now call operating system used to be called as supervisors. In the common western vernacular, the prefix hyper has come to the mean above super. So the term hypervisor was coined to indicate supervisors of supervisor. Although a Hyper-V adds a new layer between your family operating system and the hardware, we still all have the same abstraction as in a standard computer system. The use of various operating systems of the same hardware is made possible by this extra layer. Now, if I talk about what are the few of the features or some of the important thing that hyper-virtualization technology has brought up to this scenario, that would be first is high performance. The high performance virtualization layer, all guest operations are inevitably burdened by the overhead of virtualization. When compared to the non-virtualized analogs, Hyper-V has been fine-tuned so that there is no impact on the virtualized operating systems and their applications. Up to 1024 virtual machines running on a single host are supported in it. Resource distribution across all visitors are equally Windows failover, combining physical hosts to offer visitors high availability protections automatically, and there is also a dynamic assignment of resources to a virtual machine. Even if they are not in the same cluster, the ability to migrate virtual machines between Hyper-V hosts without the VGUEST operating systems experiencing any downtime, you can export of virtual machines that are active. So these were a few of the extra features which hyper-virtualization technology has brought in today's scenario. Now let's move forward and discuss the virtualization benefits. If I talk about the general benefits of virtualization and highlight the particular features that are found in Windows Server with the Hyper-V role on the free Hyper-V server. The first one is getting the most out of your hardware or the better use of hardware. There is, you know, we say there is a dollar hardware performance matrix for each dollar you pay. Every year, hard drive densities rise, new processors handle more data in the same amount of time, memory chips can store more data for the same price and so on. Yet, the requirements for the most popular software programs have not grown at the same rate. Using Hyper-V, you can consolidate more processing tasks onto less hardware without worrying about the compatibility problems allowing you to make far better use of hardware you have already invested in. The next is reduced energy demands. Consolidating systems onto fewer physical systems immediately results into lower energy footprint, both in direct power and in auxiliary power, such as lighting, cooling, and green measures to reduce energy usage gain in favor. A lower ecological footprint translates into lower utility cost and one of the key benefits of virtualization is still server consolidation. The next is there is rapid server environment deployment. New operating system environments can be delivered from the templates quickly when physical infrastructure is already in place. There is a greatly decreasing the time required to provision and deploy a new Windows server or Linux installation. To further automate virtualization system, DevOps tools like PowerShell, Terraform, Ansible, and other can communicate with virtualized environments. Then the final one is saving on the licenses. Hyper-V server is one of the few virtualization solutions currently on the market that is free of charge regardless of the feature set. Even the free edition of Hyper-V comes up with all of its feature such as failover clustering, multipath input-output, Hyper-V replication, and no artificial restrictions on CPU or memory usage. Although the capabilities of Hyper-V server are free, users are still responsible for the guest operating system licenses used in the environment. Overall, it still offers a practical way to handle a particular workload at reasonable price. Windows Server license holders can use built-in virtualization licensing in conjunction with the current host operating system. You are permitted to operate two Windows guest operating system using the Windows Server in a standard license. The server licenses you already purchased can now be used with the most servers and this is thanks to the Windows Server Data Center, which offers unlimited Windows guest operating system licenses on the same hardware. If we look on the other side, there are some also other advantages such as security. For each virtual machine created in a physical computer, their device drivers are stored in a separate kind of a disk partitions. 
Having different disk partitions provides extra layer of security. In order to hack a computer, each of the virtual machines need to be cracked separately. And this makes it hard for a hacker. The next one is redundancy. Hyper-V technology includes a feature called fail over clustering, which intends to protect a virtual machine. Failover clustering is nothing but a group of computers connected together to ensure high availability with minimum downtime. Each of these cluster nodes are connected together through a different physical cable. Normally, these cluster nodes are available inside the servers of Hyper-V. So this setup ensures that there are minimum numbers of disruption. And finally, scalability. If I talk about scalability, Hyper-V allows you to add virtual machines as you need with needing to purchase new hardware equipment. And a network bandwidth can be shared equally among the connected virtual machines. This was about scalability. I hope so guys, you got an idea regarding the virtualization benefits. Now moving forward, we are going to discuss the disadvantages of virtualization. The first one comes up is the hardware requirements. Servers running in Hyper-V virtual machines typically need more hardware resources than real-world services do. A Hyper-V computer often needs a lot of CPU and a memory. Hyper-V cannot be used on a computer with a processor speed of less than 1 GHz. Also, your computer hardware must be able to support virtualization. For instance, the CPU must support a virtualization acceleration method and must be 64-bit compatible. The next one is the software requirements. Despite the fact that majority of the software can support Hyper-V machines, some still have compatibility issues. This problem affects the majority of enterprise programs, and one well-known illustration is Microsoft 365. Even some of the software suppliers from outside the hypervisor community do not support it. And finally, there is a problem of file format. The same file format is utilized by Hyper-V Microsoft Virtual Server 2005. It creates a new file using VHD. As a result, using newly produced file in between them is convenient. Nevertheless, unless you update their drivers, the virtual hardware's elements utilized in those operating systems cannot be used in Hyper-V. And one of the most recent virtualization operating system is Windows Server. And this file format is becoming a significant issue. The advance are required for this operating system the VHDX file format is opposed to the VHD. Now, this was a little bit problem about file format, which we are going through the virtualization. So we have discussed some of the cons of virtualization. Now, at the end, I want to conclude it that what is the future for Hyper-V virtualization? Actually, there won't be a new edition of Windows Free Hyper-V Server with the introduction of Windows Server 2022 a conspicuous omission from a list of server version. This server operating system with a bare minimum of features is based on the server core and only includes the Microsoft Hyper-V hypervisor. Windows Server driver support, the virtualization components required for the Hyper-V role and some simple administrative options, such as your control panel, task manager, notepad and graphical admin tool like File Explorer and MNC Snap-ins for disk management. There is a failover clustering and similar tasks can be performed assuming the core app compatibility feature is installed. Hyper-V Manager is excluded from it. Although with Windows Admin Center, Remote Server Administration Tools or PowerShell, you may remotely control the Hyper-V server. And this is how I conclude the future of Hyper-V technology. I hope so guys, you would have enjoyed this video. And thank you guys for watching this video on what is Hyper-V and virtualization. Just a quick info guys, if you want to make a career in cloud computing, then IntelliPad provides an advanced certification on cloud and DevOps by IIT Madras. This course is taught by industry experts and IIT Madras faculty. This course is designed to upskill and land your dream job.